All right, everyone, we are back. It's currently 7 p.m. EST, and we are with the developers of Terra Zone. Um, this is the final day, and I believe they are going to be just doing some... Actually, what, what do y'all have in mind for this session? I guess I'll go ahead and, and let y'all lead with all of that. Sure. Uh, it'll be like a bit of a recap on what we talked about over the past two days as well as our plans for the future. Um, we'll talk a little bit more too about Shoot for the Stars. That includes any questions that we can answer at this time from either you or anyone in the chat. As well as uh, we could probably reveal like some like minor things that aren't too spoilerific uh, within this time. As well as just any anything in general, Terra Zone that anybody would like to know that isn't uh, spoilerific. <laughs> Sounds good. Sorry, I'm. I was fixing the slideshow, so now it should be completely updated with all Excellent. of y'all's photos. Yeah, great. Yeah, so I think for this session, we're pretty much going to be talking about our game Shoot for the Stars. I sent you a bunch of images from our game, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, we could go into what it is and what our plans are for. Uh, you mentioned that we could talk about like uh, Kickstarters on here, and that is actually one of the big things that we uh, are planning on doing in the first quarter of next year. Yeah, we did not. Uh, that's something we did not discuss in the last couple of days. Is we do plan on releasing a Kickstarter for the video game Terrazone Shoot for the Stars. Uh, meeting meeting the goals will significantly buff the content in the game in all sorts of ways. Okay, for the Kickstarter, do y'all have a uh, pre one of the pre links that they they give you yet? Like a, uh, I know Kickstarter allows you to have people pretty much pre-register, so when you go live, they get the notification. Uh, not at the moment. We're um, okay. still at the early phases of it. Uh, we want to release it closer to the time of our demo. Okay. Um, so we're going to most likely set it up in full around that time. <laughs> Sounds and good. Also, That's exciting. And also, and also make the each uh, yeah. I'll All the incentives as um, as appealing as possible, of course. Oh, naturally. Um, so, yeah, we talked a little bit about Shoot for the Stars, like very briefly, I think on Friday, when we were like kind of introducing ourselves and everything. So, um, yep. again, it's a JRPG game that we're developing using Game Maker, and uh, it's very heavily inspired by the Persona series as far as like the RPG aspect of it, and uh, going through like the school year and everything. Um, Ryan, would you like to discuss like some of the stuff that you've uh, put into the game so far? Um, yes, so far um, a lot of the RPG aspects of the game uh, have been implemented. Um, namely like systems for uh, collecting items. Um, since our game has a relationship system between uh, characters, the relationship system uh, has been implemented. Um, simple uh, menu stuff such as like the options menu um, as well as the uh, main menu of the game have also been implemented in full. Um, we're just starting on the actual uh, card game mechanics, um, so uh, that's yeah, that's uh, been one of the most of the big things uh, we've been working on, as well as the um, the map itself. Actually, that just uh, came up now. Um, we have like a unique, I, sort of isometric system uh, that swaps depending on how far along in the room you are. Um, so that took quite a bit of work to actually get the uh, Z sorting of the characters and the objects in the room uh, properly implemented. Um, and so yeah, that's basically it as far as the stuff that's been implemented in the game so far. Uh, also, the cards themselves, actually. Um, the layouts of the cards are completely generated by uh, the computer. Um, so we don't really need to spend a lot of time in Photoshop setting up the cards anymore. Uh, we can just type all the information in, and bam, you got a card. Um, 
like magic. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's what I do. Yeah, he's a wizard. That's what he's been studying all these years. It's the way of the programmer. Yes. <laughs> um, anything you want to talk about as far as the art side of this, Keller or Rob? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much been a collaboration. Uh, I mean, like, I mean, all three of us are collaborating naturally, but, uh, like, I would definitely say, like, between, like, Rob and my side of things, like, Rob is the main art director of this game, so everything that you see, like, in the game is, like, he is, like, the foreman, like, that is, like, his design, and, like, that's his idea, so, like, anything that I might do, like, if I'm animating something, like, I'll check with him, and I'll be like, you know, does this look like something the character would be doing, so, like, that's kind of, like, my role in it, is I'll take his designs, I'll basically bring them to life and make, like, the characters move on screen, so, like, I've been using a program called Spine, which has been absolutely fantastic so far. So I've uh, mostly been using it for the visual novel side of things. So like there's a screenshot that has been showing up like where they're in like a school hallway and it's like your typical like visual novel kind of scene. So like the characters are fully animated and uh, they have like full expressions. That's also been kind of coded through Ryan's side. And Rob was the one that drew the puppets, and I basically took his assets and made the move. <laughs> so it's like we're all kind of being wizards in our own ways. Yep. Uh, I'm handling most of the, uh, as, as Kayla has already said, I'm handling most of the um, concept work. So I've been like designing the characters, um, some ideas based on the um, what the, the world, uh, as in the town of Nistal, which is where the game will primarily be taking place the town has um two different i'm sorry one second Uh, well, Rob's away for a moment. Do you have any questions for us so far, Zayfin? Um, y'all have a basic gist on the demo. Do you think you have a rough estimate on when the game will actually be released, or is it too early right now to really tell? So, we sort of have an idea of when we want it to release. Uh, we're looking for a 2022 release, um, but... Obviously, things can always change during development, so yeah. uh, it's still too early to give an exact date. Okay. Let's... Yeah, we estimated... Uh, yeah, sorry about that, I had to do something for just a minute. Um, the estimation is, uh, like, first quarter for the demo uh, next year. And then we're guessing, it's a very loose guess, because we're not sure. And of course, the big journey, this is a big game we're developing. Uh, we're guessing... 2022 somewhere in that ballpark for the uh, final release okay that seems like a pretty good guesstimate I wanted to say I think the major challenge for this is programming the AI to uh, play the game and how all the cards work I believe right Ryan would say um, the AI thing. is up there but I would say um, uh, the yeah the card effects are the thing that will be the most challenging I believe yeah, because yeah, they all do different things, so you have to tell the uh, the program to do like, oh well, this card draws a card, so you have to tell it, okay, draw a card, and then in this and then in this situation, oh, this card returns a card to the hand. Like, uh, there's a wide variety of effects in the game. Some are kind of similar because, of course, that plays into the themes of each of the affinities. But um, there's a lot of unique effects, and there's sometimes like a different sequence probably that you'll have to do for one versus the other. Of course, this is a non-programmer trying to, you know, make some. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do, um, you know? Yeah. The both the matter of making sure that all of the cards can perform the functions that they need to um, for um, all the different effects in the game. But on top of that, also making sure that they execute in order and they wait for each other. Uh, that's actually fairly challenging uh, to implement. But I've more or less figured out how it's going to work. So it's just a matter of actually implementing it. 
cool. And also, if anyone that's currently viewing has any questions, feel free to ask it in the chat, and I'll go ahead and relay that over to them. So just keep that in mind. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I think before... Yeah, more, before you left, I think you were discussing in the middle your of discussing role. something. Uh, it's more or less like restating re restating what I said in the uh, day one stream. Um, Draco and I both work as the artists on the team. That way we can uh, cover two different aspects and things will move along a little more faster. Um, I handle more of the traditional side of things. I do um, traditional line work wherever possible, but uh, the game will be mixed with uh, mostly digital line work. Uh, that way we can scale characters and objects up and down as we as we can as uh, we see fit so that like it won't look as messy because we found that scaling traditional lines uh, can sometimes result in like artifacts and like weird stuff going on like you'll see some weird fuzzy lines. So um <clears throat> Uh, we do the the only case of traditional line work, and uh, and it's pretty much on most of the cards that I draw myself in terms of the images. That's pretty much the only place you'll see in the game within the video game itself, of course, uh, where you'll see traditional line work. Uh, we found a way to make that as uh, clean as possible. But the uh, yeah the game itself is more digital based and uh, Draco's a lot stronger with computer art. Um, she can make really nice traditional lines as well as uh, handle a lot of the uh, the uh, software out there. She's really good with Photoshop, really good with Clip Studio Paint, and many other programs. So um, her big hand in this is the uh, software side for sure in terms of uh, art. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I like to think that all those years of knowledge go to something pretty good here. <laughs> um, yeah, like I've been working with Photoshop for a very long time and very, very recently actually I discovered Spine though. It was pretty easy for me to pick that up because I noticed that there were some similarities with uh, After Effects as well as like some 3D software I've used, which is Maya and Blender. So it had like, it kind of felt like a mixture of using with those two programs. Was, Puppet Animation is basically using a very similar concept to 3D, except it's just all on 2D planes. So, and having previous knowledge of that, it really helped to understand how to use the programs a lot better. And I find that, like, once you've, like, dabbled in a bunch of different programs, like, they all have very samey things, but they do, like, certain things a little bit differently. Like, maybe the UI might be a little different, or you might be like, oh, hey, uh, this is going to work this way and yeah it kind of that one was really really nice to work with easily like one of my favorite animation softwares um very intuitive and we yeah. we sort of tag teamed it when trying to learn it so we figured it out fairly quickly and yeah, what was Ryan, that program called again fine uh, it's, it's actually fine. A, yep. yeah okay. really really good animation software Highly recommend it. I noticed that you had some like puppet animation with your uh, new website design, and uh, I figure that like one of your team guys probably used like something very similar on like your side of things. So I was like, oh yeah, look at that <laughs> puppet animation. Um, I think that was like for your demi game, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um... Yeah. I don't. And you had something. You had something that was animated. I don't know how it was done, but it okay. looked like uh, something. <laughs> it might have, yeah, had the same feeling of a puppet animation, but may yeah, not have actually been. To it. That's, yep. that's more or less what I'm saying with it. I was, I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I've been seeing an awful lot of that lately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, was it um, Hades breathing oh, or whatever? Was Hades. that what? Yeah, that was the okay. One. Yes. Um. Yeah, I have no idea what animation they did i paid some just uh some random person a commission to do it so i mean that's totally they could have done that yeah very possible but yeah now that came out really good so like whoever you commissioned to do that that was pretty awesome i gotta say well thank you um yeah <laughs> 
But yeah, aside from like talking about like all this like software stuff, I mean like uh, putting it all together, yeah, with their Kickstarter plans there, naturally that comes into a lot of prep work, a lot of like putting down like hard numbers, like hard values and being like, what do we need to make this happen? <laughs> um, we, earlier in the summertime, we all, the three of us like sat down and we were like, okay, what is the minimum requirement of what we're going to be needing for this? And I'd say probably arguably like the most important thing is probably the marketing side of things at this point. Yeah, if I had to say what our greatest weakness right now, it's it's definitely the marketing. Um, it's hard to reach out to uh, get noticed by a lot of people because right now we're in a time and age where uh, there's a lot of people like us out there putting their stuff out there. And um, it's it's tough to stand out among that and it's only going to get harder as the years come go by um because the computer in general has just taken over our lives as we all know sure thing that and mobile phones um so it's it's got like everyone has access to social media and they're just posting stuff like every day every so often and so your what you have to say gets lost among the um the the, sea. the giant sea of content of like you know yeah it's um steam or at least um analyzers of um the steam marketplace have um actually named this entire thing they called it the indie apocalypse there's so many indie games releasing now um that it's oversaturated the market and it's very difficult for a uh, indie team uh, to get recognized yeah i definitely understand that um one thing i would suggest to y'all is looking into seo which if you don't know what that is it's search engine optimization essentially it's getting your game listed on google higher than everyone else for certain keywords if you're able to do that um it will help save a significant amount of time on actually sitting there and promoting and every you know and everything else for example i had a site that uh i you know got first on google and was getting over five hundred thousand views a month so seo oh, wow. is definitely something i would recommend looking into if you do want to go down you know a uh i guess I, I don't know, yeah, how, what, what, where <laughs> uh, I was going with that last part, but yeah, you know. Yeah, I get you. Um, yeah, we actually, for our website, uh, we've been developing it using Wix. I'm sure you've probably heard yeah. of Wix, right? Yeah, they they offer built-in SEO um, support, so we've been trying to work with that best we can. Uh, okay, um, if you so, want, yeah. offline, I can, I can give you um, – some tips and tricks and everything there's a lot oh, yeah. more that goes into seo than what you know uh oh, software sure. like that says first boasts about that would certainly be great yeah that would just be very helpful yeah we'd appreciate it yeah any help we can get uh i was about to say too that like our one chance right now is to band together and collect like all the people that are into what we're into and then the more people that get involved the more the word gets out there because those people know people that you don't you've never met before yeah and it's just going to keep branching out almost like our game you keep playing cards to the board that opens up more and more spaces more and more opportunities so oh, that, yeah. I, I really feel like that's that's the best bet right now amongst the the, the giant sea as we'll call it of you uh doing what we're doing do you feel a little corny after after that a line? little bit you know what <laughs> fine you can laugh at me if you wish, but I thought it was poetic. <laughs> a bit of both, I suppose. Because I just thought of it now, and sometimes brain just go like, go say it. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, oh, oh, whatever. It don't matter. I mean, Terra Zone creator, I would expect it. I would expect there to be a level of... Our game has corniness. a lot of... Yeah, our game has a lot of corny puns. So you know what? It's fine. <laughs> it's just in the spirit. That's right. There's a number of them that I can think of that are personal favorites of mine. Uh, some of which even that like are going to be coming out soon. And oh my god, like 
it, it's it's kind of funny like how that happens because you could be like literally in a conversation with somebody and then it's fascinating when you start like analyzing puns and metaphors and ideas and like then all of a sudden as you're talking to somebody you're like wait a second they just used a, a simile or like a metaphor wouldn't that be funny as like a card name or a card idea like an example being like uh, even a couple weeks ago like just talking and like somebody said oh silly goose and i was like that'd be that'd be a really funny idea and then like i was remembering like certain words that i thought were cool in like japanese and one of them that came to my mind was arigato <laughs> and uh yeah arigato that one's one of my personal favorite like double puns right there because arigato is thank you and uh gato and Spanish is cat, so kind of combining like the puns there, being like, oh, it's a thank you cat, wouldn't that make for a funny idea? <laughs> so, yeah, little things like that, they always come up in conversation, and you get like a literal sea of infinite ideas just by snowballing things back and forth. Oh, yeah. Like uh, the cards you see today, anyone who's played Tabletop Simulator. Um, or may pay, play in the future. There's a huge mixture of like cards, card ideas that I've had for years and years and years, and then there are some that are completely brand new to yep. the uh, to the project. So it's it's really cool personally. I mean, I know a lot of people like nobody knows who any of these things are. Like coming out the gate, like, well, I don't know what a Destiny Dragon is. To me, that guy's been around since I don't know, like. If I were gonna be like every any sort of rough form of his existence, I would say like 2003, arguably. Arguably, but yeah. like, and it would, to everybody else, it's like, oh well, he's just you know a dude. I've never seen him before, and it won't be until like two years down the road, if they get heavily involved in the project, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, he's the mascot of the game. So like, that's kind of interesting though to me as like a creator. Like I have like a weird perspective that nobody else has, and I think other creators probably feel this way too about the uh, things they make oh yeah um having seen like the game kind of like expand and grow over the years like it's interesting to see how like certain things like just kind of evolve over time like you might have like an idea that just sticks around literally forever and then other ideas just might morph into other ideas um like another example I can think of is even Bouncy Ball, for example. Like that's a card that allows you to return like a card from the field to the hand. And that's like, you know, you might expect that like in a card game, like something that returns something to the hand, right? Um, it actually kind of started off from a coupon idea. And it like the idea just turned into a Bouncy Ball because like it started off with uh, the idea of like, oh, you could do a thing for free this turn. And uh, we turned that into, well, what if you bounce something for free this turn? And then the bouncy ball idea kind of came from the, the coupon idea. We decided, we like, oh, you know, that might be a bit more Terra Zone-ish, just because of how zany the world is. Yeah, it's a mixture of, there's cute stuff, creepy stuff, weird stuff, wholesome stuff. It's, it's we're, we're aiming for like a mixture of a number of different, uh, I guess, feelings that one would have when they look at a card. That way, it, it'll help branch out because um, what we're doing already is quite competitive. Uh, oh, yeah. Being that we're, as I mentioned before, a giant sea. Like that's like the theme of this stream, pretty much. Right. How we're how are we going to fight the tides of this giant sea? And. Uh, not only is it there are a ton of other people doing stuff that ranges from all sorts of things there's also the other card games out there both in the homemade trading card game slash indie game world as well as the big ones and yeah you know what anybody who knows card games you know what the big ones are yeah we don't even have to uh name them you don't even need to be into card games and you can know what that is like if you literally you probably do chances are yeah you could literally mention magic the gathering to somebody who's never played a card game in their life and they'll know what that is <laughs> yeah i mean um, same thing with Yu-Gi-Oh and pokemon oh yeah 
Yeah, all uh, three of those. Huge. That being said, another uh, big risk is the fact that um, the game itself is very, very niche, um, being not only a trading card uh, game, a digital trading card game like this, but the fact that it is a single player experience. Um, it's very challenging in the sense of uh, gathering people interested, since that's not a not a widely played genre. Um, while card games digitally have become popular recently, it's been more so uh, deck builder style um, digital card games. Um, so offering an entire full trading card experience is um, it's quite different. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if it grasps um, the same. Uh, crowds as the other card game um, games out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's because of that that we try to um, add as much original flavor as we can. Because then it might be like, oh, they may not like uh, like a main aspect of a card game, but maybe we did something that they're like, oh, I, I really like this one thing, and that's enough to like make me play the game. Like, you never know. So that's why, because of that, we try to infuse as much stuff as, like, just for lack of a better term. As yeah, we like can. you could be uh, really into cute things, or maybe you're really into creepy things, and you find like maybe one or two cards that's like, oh, that's super cute. Like, oh, maybe there's a kitten, or maybe there's a puppy, and you're like, I like this. I'm gonna play this. <laughs> yeah, as well as the game itself too, because um, uh, we have a, a big board with a lot of spaces. And it's all about strategic placement of cards. Um, even even just to say, like we've played like almost eighty games at this point between eTableCon, our own private play testing, and that's of this iteration alone. And I am still misplaying like crazy. <laughs> I, I will go on record and say that on this day. <laughs> oh yeah. As one of the creators of this game, yes, I have misplayed multiple times. Today was especially bad. So oh, that man. just goes to show like the depth that's in this game. Right. Um, there's so much to learn. So with that, I do have a, I guess, more of a personal question. Have you ever been sure. playing the game and someone asked you a question on like a card effect and it makes complete sense on, you know, what they're asking? Let's say, you know, you developed a card effect to say do one thing, but the way that it's worded could, in, you know, they interpreted that it could do something completely different and by the words it does in fact do that have you ever had a like you know like a situation like that and if so how how did you handle it it's funny you mentioned that because actually there is a word we're planning on changing um after the event is over which is um discard actually <laughs> yep um, uh, so yeah go ahead uh, yeah, we used discard as both the term for um, discarding a card from your hand as well as um, on the field. Um, I don't think this particularly applies as well to the example you gave, though, because this was simply a matter of clarification. Uh, we definitely have had effects, though, where um, the card, yeah, it said one thing that, yeah, they were completely right about, um, and yeah, we... We sort of just let them uh, go with the effect that it's stated because that's that's the truth, and then we just go back ourselves and fix it. So there have even been times where like a player would do something that wasn't intended, and then we ended up liking what the player did instead, and kind of made that like the effect of a card. Um, one example being attachment cards in our game, which um, like they sound exactly like what they are. They equip to a fighting creature. Um, and normally, or at least what they were originally intended for was like you couldn't uh, play them uh, defensively like when it was your opponent's turn attacking. We have like this mechanic where you can play support cards to respond to an opponent's attack and then like boost like your own power. Originally attachment cards could not do that. Um, we had a friend of ours that did that and we didn't say anything because we actually liked that idea and we just made it an inherent rule of the game and in fact we even made a card after that specific test that actually applies to um doing it either offensively or dif dif uh, offensively or defensively which was the card uh, power up 
So then you could like get like this giant boost. You could either use it offensively or you could use it defensively to just like stay alive for that turn. Um, so that was like an example of like, oh, it wasn't read properly, but that's okay. It worked in our favor. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's pretty much what I was um, trying to get at. I just I couldn't word very well. So yeah, I think we got what you were saying yeah. there. I yep. feel. Yeah. I just wanted to to know if y'all had any similar like situations and stuff like that because I I think it's kind of cool when the community essentially does something that you didn't necessarily think that it could do and turns out to be actually really cool thing that is essentially you know now in the game yep i've always been fans of that anyway like oh if uh, somebody makes like a recommendation and like if enough people like say this thing then it's like oh well clearly fans want to see that and like even like me being a fan of like other series, I always love it. Like when like oh the producers like actually like listen to their fans and do a thing. So why not do that in response <laughs> to whoever ends up liking our project? Um, anything you'd like to add to that, Rob or Ryan? Um, I'm always just yeah, al always about like um, working with other people whenever possible because. <laughs> I tried doing this for years on my own and it just didn't go anywhere and it wasn't until like I opened up the YouTube channel and then like um, started working closer with Ryan and Kayla instead of just taking suggestions like actually working with them that's when we started really getting somewhere because that's when you could put all your heads together. Shane just said um, it's always been an interesting game from the beginning just thought I'd let y'all know. Oh yeah, he's he's been with us for years and years. Oh, Shane yeah. is a very very good friend of mine, uh, dating all the way back to sixth grade. Um, he's he's been like around and supporting the project for who knows how long at this point. He's one of the few people who's seen like Basically almost every, every, if not every iteration that this Terror Zone Clash of Creatures has gone through, utterly and entirely. Very oh, big yeah. supporter of that guy. Big shout outs to that guy. Oh, yes. Well, thanks for stopping in, Shane. And good on you for, you know, helping support TerraZone. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I, 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 I know we uh, we derailed us slightly because we started talking <laughs> about the card game again. <laughs> and oh, we were gonna, oh, yeah. I mean, it's related. It is related. It is related, yeah. We are, we are a video game first. We want to clarify that, too, because yeah. we get this question sometimes. We are a video game before we're a card game because yep. uh, we do understand that our game has a lot of involved micro um, words not coming to my mind right now for some reason. Is, is that kind of micromanagement? Weird? There's a lot of micromanagement amongst uh, willpower, uh, the card placement themselves. You have a lot of cards on the board to keep track of effects. And uh, sometimes, depending what you're playing, like in Earth's case, you will be generating a lot of counters as well. So um, we're definitely a video game first, then we're a card game. We open the floor up to the card game, though, on occasions to you know check with people. Is this fun? Like we always want to make sure that people and it's are having important fun. to see like different perspectives. In fact, like e table con, we've even during like just weekend alone, like. It has helped us, like, you know, tweak very, very minor things, and sometimes those minor things can make, like, a huge impact on how, like, a card or the deck as a whole can act. And we're kind of, like, at that stage right now where we feel like the game is, like, literally its final form. And we're just at that point, which, as you know, as a card game designer, um, effects sometimes need a little bit of tweaking here and there. <laughs> Of course, yeah, that's all. of course, I would hate to code it all and then find out I had to do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why we try to keep that to a minimum. <laughs> yes. I mean, I guess that's what that's the good thing about testing beforehand. But even still, you never really know until you have all the cards in the game. And then 
Next thing you know, someone's like, oh hey, this one card y'all might not have expected to be broken turns out to be extremely overpowered. Very true, but um, a very important um, philosophy in game design is that your bare bones game uh, should be completely playable without um, any like additional content. The, the basics of the game should be solid. Um, so a big part of what a lot of our testing was, was to make sure that the core game was good. And the, the cards come later. We can always uh, rebalance cards, even even after the game comes out. Um, nowadays, games are so DLC and patch heavy that it's it's common to go back and rebalance something uh, once the game already exists. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, definitely through all of our testing, we were able to refine the core gameplay into something we're all very happy with. And that's another good thing about being a uh, card game first is the fact that you will um sorry I'm uh you'll be able to go through and tweak any cards that might be broken versus if you were a physical card game first the moment you had any you know printable cards you can't really tweak any cards once everyone else has it Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's much harder to redistribute the cards and at least get the information out to other players that cards effect has changed. So, But in the case of a digital card game, yeah, it's just a matter of a patch goes out. People, unless they turn their internet off, don't have a choice but to download it. Suddenly <laughs> their cards are the way they're supposed to be. Yep. A huge advantage with that. And plus, you could also reach an international uh, audience a lot easier, too. Yeah, the struggle with doing physical card game um, is, of course, like, it's very expensive and it's a lot more difficult to get the word out there. You have to get, like, certain markets to card stores and stuff that will want to sell your product. And then there's no guarantee that people will buy it. You have to get a warehouse to store it all. Like, it, it, it gets really, really ch uh, risky and challenging and expensive to go that route. Meanwhile, with the digital one, you reach, it's a whole lot less expensive. You have the whole world to, like, through the power of the internet, the whole world can uh, see your thing. It's just a matter of uh, being stubborn, going on social media, posting your updates, letting people know you're very serious, which, yes, we are very serious about our project. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. um yeah it's just it's just that like you just have to go out there and we feel like it's a mixture of like like dedication and luck when it comes to you have to find the right people but also be really stubborn and keep doing it because that like i think luck is kind of a manipulation like you can improve your luck by being stubborn because if you do it once and give up and call it bad luck well you gave up and nothing to do with that you you messed up one time that just means you have to stand back up and do it again. Keep going. It's, yeah. Because I know it's 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 easy. It is it's very easy to fail and just like get discouraged. And I completely understand that. I almost did that several times, like throughout the years. And it's it's still challenging today. But I'm like, no, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. All the signs are there. So I'm just going to keep pushing on with my comrades here. That's probably arguably the most important thing is like even if something seems like it's just not going the way you want to is like just remember that things can always improve, things can get better and just keep moving forward. And oh, sometimes yes. like people being harsh to you and saying like negative things is actually inherently uh, beneficial because then it helps you to improve like okay why is it they don't like something and then like you pick your feet back up and be like you know what i'm gonna prove them wrong uh so i'm gonna show them this is this can be better i'm gonna take what they said to heart and improve upon it in yeah. fact our first convention that we went to we literally had a guy tell us like this game does not look collectible and this was like way way before we even had like the board game aspect of the game like created like this was like an earlier earlier version and he's like this game like what makes that what makes me want to collect this and he was like super critical and he was like you know what makes this card game stand out he was asking us all those questions 
and uh, it really like made us like sit down and go back to the drawing board. We literally scrapped the project, redesigned it from the ground up, redid the templates, redid the artwork, redid the game. It's literally like it 180 from that convention two years ago. Like it's uh, basically almost a hundred percent a different game. Like there's very few things that are similar to what it was like even during that time we got that and continuing to go to all these conventions and slowly but surely we've been hearing more and more positive responses like with each convention there's been like you know little critiques here and there and we took them to heart we would be like okay you know these there we've been hearing a lot of this comment what can we do to improve upon this and we'd go back we'd fix it and then the next time we'd like maybe do like a big showcase and like, finally, it's come to that point where a lot of people have been telling us this weekend, like, yo, this is fun. This is addicting. We've literally had a person come back, like, more than 10 times to play this game. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So you got yeah. a new fan. We got a new fan. Yeah. Yep. So he's that's he's come back fun. about 17 times now, 18 times, like, Something in this like weekend. <laughs> it, was, it was wow. Big shout yeah. outs to Speed Robo on YouTube. He's an awesome guy. Yes. Uh, big card enthusiast. He plays all sorts of games. He makes his own even too. So if you're into card games, yeah, go check him out. Okay. He's, uh, cool. he's taking a big like to our game. So yeah, once again, big shout outs to him. Been super helpful too. Like uh, he's been like picking the game apart and honestly like with some of his uh critique it's been helping improve like uh some of these minor little things and it's been very helpful very appreciated too and wh who was he again his name is speed robo speed robo okay um... yeah with that in mind, like with the game feeling like it's basically in its final form, um, we feel more than ready than ever that this Kickstarter has a lot of potential. Um, it's just a matter of getting all the pieces together. And yeah, like as we mentioned earlier in the stream, like the marketing is probably going to be like the big like make or break, honestly, because clearly what we've been showcasing this weekend, we've been getting a lot of really positive feedback. It's just we got to let people know this thing exists. Yep, got a battle that sea. Uh, that yeah, that pretty much brings it back to the uh, the video game itself. Um, so we have to release. We're planning to release that demo, like I mentioned before, in the first quarter of next year, and then the Kickstarter will follow shortly after that. Because that way, people will get their hands on the game. They'll get to try it out. They'll we'll figure. We'll find out what they think about it. Uh, both the card game, of course, because it acts as the battle system of the game, as well as the RPG elements. Um, I'm not sure if we went over like briefly like, we did roughly yeah, about what the demo is like, but um, uh, I mean that's up to you guys. You want to like if yeah, uh, like very briefly, of course. There's still plenty yeah. of secrets to be found within even just the demo. Oh yeah. Um, but roughly our plan is, and this is very just rough. Like you're gonna go through the first few days of the game because you'll be going through, as I mentioned in the last stream, or some one of us did. You'll be playing through a whole school year, so you'll be playing as uh, high school students. Which opens up doors to all sorts of social activity, of course. Um, so you'll get to play through like the first few days. You'll get your... Uh, you'll dip your feet into all of the, the, the things you can do in the game. The walking around, exploring a little bit. Some of the story... Uh, the gameplay itself, as in the interacting with characters making choices uh, which will affect possibly um, what what a character says back at you and all that sort of fun stuff as well as the card game itself you'll get to play like one or two um, actual card battles in the game as well so that way players will get the best of both worlds within those first few uh, in-game days but get a good taste of what shoot for the stars is going to be like Awesome. And yeah. now with the download, are you going to have that on your website? Uh, or... We're actually planning to release it on Steam. Okay, um, even the demo? Uh, yes, yep. Okay, sweet. Yep. Demo will be completely free to download and try it. 
in the very near future, we're also going to be uh, launching on our website. It's going to be a Terra Zone section. We've been working very hard on making it look super cool. We'll have uh, a bunch of screenshots from the game as well as like uh, general updates. Uh, though on our website, as we also mentioned, we've been posting like weekly devlogs about like the game's progress. But on the website itself, there'll be like a dedicated section where you can find like more information. We also plan on uh, also in the near future like releasing like a newsletter probably like either bi-weekly or monthly or something like that and just to like showcase like okay these are the updates so uh, this is when the kickstarter is coming out. this is when the demo is coming out stuff like that yep and for the demo itself that means we have to make sure by uh, between now and going to within the first quarter we have to make sure the battle system is working properly. The AI knows how to use all the cards. Um, uh, make sure all of the in-game card art is ready to go um, for the decks that will be available within the uh, demo. Um, we do have the whole story planned out. I will go out and say that we do have a rough outline of the story, so we'll know how to start this off. It'll just be a matter of executing it visually through the uh, visual novel sections parts of the game um as well as that just make sure all the the areas that you'll get to visit are finished and uh all the sprites are done all of the uh visual novel puppets as we're kind of calling them are finished among other things so there will even within the demo for just a demo it'll be quite a lot of work uh, we have quite a bit of time especially once we really get cracking uh i think we can do it yeah and we also have like uh um the other thing we didn't mention yet was that we also commissioned a musician uh shout out to swika media he's a really awesome musician he works on music for uh so far he's worked on a couple indie games uh, as, and he also worked on one of our previous projects he did the music um, for hide and seek as well and uh, now he's uh, been doing a fantastic job getting like the general mood for the game out. Uh, we having a slice of life overall theme for this game. We have kind of this jazzy genre for the game's music so far planned out. And um, we have, I think something like seven tracks so far already created, which are going to be in the demo. We have like two more songs that we just need to get done for that. And uh, one of them being like, the title music, which is going to be a very important piece, because that's going to determine like you know, the general mood of the game. And once we have all that, uh, yeah, we have the music available for the demo, and we'll be returning to him for the rest of the project as well. Awesome! Oh, yes. Nine Absolutely. nine things of music for just the demo. That's uh, yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yep. I want to make sure it definitely gives you a really good taste of what the rest of the game is going to be like. How's the um, battle music while you're, you know, playing the actual card game inside of, you know, the game? Is that going to be a little more upbeat or is it going to stay still stay the same like mellow jazz type uh, music or what? Uh, it's definitely more upbeat. We have so far the um, the main battle theme, main card battle theme. We played it a few times actually within uh, the uh, the tabletop simulator when we had people trying the game out. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, they're liking it too. So um, we're pretty confident that people will enjoy the music along with the rest of the game. I would yeah. feel. Uh, we we felt it also worked. We made sure that all the music like works together. Like it all sounds like it's part of the same package. And. Um, that we are all like we all you know we we get together listen to the track uh talk about our thoughts about it and like all right well what what's what should we change what's good and then like we get back to him really quickly and then he quick very quickly makes the changes and uh, we listen to it again and then we're like all right moving on and we just keep going and rolling like that only got two more left i believe that way yeah, just two tracks. Yep, two left. Yep. Yep. And I think just sound effects is like all that's left as far as like 
demo's music is concerned. Yeah, as far as sounds are concerned, that's it. It's just the sound, uh, yeah, sound effects. Yep. Now, question for the demo. When y'all decide to release it, are you going to also post a link on the ETableCon TerraZone section? So if, you know, those that are part of ETC will be able to check it out and download it? We're going to be posting that everywhere we can. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds... Hey, that's... That's that's great. Oh, yeah. We want... We wanted... That's that's definitely the major purpose of this demo. We want it in as many hands as possible. We want as much feedback as possible, both positive and negative. Give it all to us so that we know what to do. And uh, if the Kickstarter... if, If we win the Kickstarter, as I'm calling it, then... This game will get bigger, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger, faster, bigger and faster. Sweet. Now, are y'all going to have, um, uh, y'all go ahead and, and continue why I, I try to think of how to word this question. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I don't know, what, what other things do we still have to discuss about the game? Uh, yeah, because we, do, we don't want to give too much away, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a reminder, what all of our updates that we do have can be found on mysticmaskmedia.com via the uh, devlog articles. We've been posting those once a week, either on Friday or Saturday, and um, we have about 20, I think, up so far. Yep. So we yes. have already revealed a fair bit of content we have uh, our main cast revealed, um, as well as like a few other characters, a couple places, the um, things like the calendar menu, which just showed up just now, as well as a few other things. So, and there'll be more to come. Um, there'll be like little little weekly updates. So we'll keep feeding a little bit of content and uh, reveals to all of our viewers as the uh, the weeks come and go. Sweet. Now, I guess this is more of a suggestion than it would be a question. So the suggestion suggestion would be if y'all have the at least uh, basic Kickstarter and you get the like pre-registered link, I would suggest adding that to the demo. So if people like it, they can click the Kickstarter you know button or whatever on the actual game. I don't know if that's an option for the program you use but if so that way they get instantly sent there and they can you know subscribe to it so when y'all go live you you know they will get an email and it should potentially help uh significantly with uh the amount of backers that you have on the initial release yes that's That's a a very good good idea yeah yeah will most likely consider doing that. Oh yes. The, whatever whatever you can to do. Whatever yeah. you can do. Especially with Kickstarter, the beginning like I think the first two days is the biggest for your Kickstarter. It's the if, first two and the last two I think yes. are the big days. Yeah. If yeah. you if you're not funded by the first two, most people actually shut down the kickstarter and try to promote more before reopening it back up yeah if it doesn't get a certain yeah uh, level yeah, by yeah. the end of the couple days i could see that yeah, yeah. It makes sense because it's a huge commitment to run the kickstarter even during the days where it's slow so yeah i assume they all feel that yeah it's like a 30-day kickstarter so why waste like 28 of those days Set getting this Kickstarter going while we could spend it making this better and more appealing and trying again. Yeah, yeah not to say not to say it's impossible, but sometimes you do have to weigh your options and manage your time accordingly. Time is a very precious resource, as we all know, and it waits for no one. Yeah, especially if you're developing any type of game. Period. That time you're spending worrying about a Kickstarter, you know, after the two days, if it has thirty percent you're wasting all that time that you could be spending for further advancing the game. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Agree with that. Well, we got about five minutes left. Would y'all like to, um, I guess, end it in? Or say any any last any last words or anything? I've got a couple things to put in. Um, Kayla, Ryan, you can go first if it's um, if there's anything brief you want to say. Um, I kind of want to ask you if there's any like a uh, little maybe like a. S- idea since we have like kind of gone over a couple ideas for rewards if there's any ones that you feel like mentioning um not off the bat however i can sit down and try to think of some and then message one of y'all if i do in fact come up with anything I was actually uh asking that one to robin ryan oh okay i'm sorry oh yeah (laughs) Um, I mean, we've we've talked about them, but I I think it's too early to mention anything before anything's finalized. So I don't think. Yeah, no, I would there. not go over rewards yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted to ask first, because uh, yeah, you never know. Figure yeah. run that by you before getting all excited about it. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep that we'll some, keep that secret for now. We do have some really good ideas. I will definitely say that. Yes. But yeah, you can go ahead then. Okay. Hey, Ryan, you don't have anything uh, brief to input before I go into it? Nothing nothing particularly special, so yeah, go okay. for it. Uh, so just uh, once again, since this will be the last time this weekend, um, brief plans for the future. We already talked about the demo. We'll be releasing that demo first quarter for Terra Zone Shoot for the Stars next year. Shortly after that will be the Kickstarter for it. Uh, any support on that, greatly appreciated. And then um, I mentioned, I think, in the first stream, I'll just reiterate it here in case they only see this one or whichever. Um, During the uh, next month, I will be planning the the uh, the story for the how to play comic, which I'll be releasing on Webtoons. That way, um, people have a reference, another reference to learn how to play Terror Zone Clash of Creatures. As well as get uh, introduced to the upcoming comic series that I'll be doing alongside the video game. So you'll be getting two different worlds within the same world, if that makes any sense. Um, And then in December, I plan to start releasing pages for the How to Play comic. So that people can kind of trickle in. They see the first few pages, they're like, alright, I'm interested. And then they'll, they'll stick around. I'll keep releasing more and more on a um few days basis something like that and then hopefully i'm aiming for the start to the official comic series in 2021 um and then just uh, lastly shout outs to people that got to try out our game and giving us some good feedback awesome and, uh, well, yeah that's it for me i'm i'm glad you liked it um glad to see y'all second time around hopefully to see y'all the third time around um but yeah thank y'all once again especially for taking you know the hour to talk more about your game and go more in depth with the digital version of it i personally was one of the people that was under the assumption it was a card game first so it was you know really helpful this weekend to figure out it is in fact going to be a uh a digital game and i'm excited for that as well so uh, appreciate it appreciate y'all stopping by once again to the viewers you can check out all of their stuff by going to the terra zone card game under the vendors in the discord there you can see their you know website all the other information that they have pictures etc etc so make sure to check them out and it potentially play testing more if they're going to do that any or you know later this evening too oh yes we'll be uh we'll be wrapping it up tonight i think we're all booked up though however um if you're really interested we could open it up to if there's like a couple of people that really want to even just watch us play we're gonna have a couple play testers for the rest of tonight but um yeah if you're if you're really interested um let us know and we'll see if we can uh, squeeze you in. 
Awesome. Well, thank you all once again, and y'all have a great rest of y'all's night. He was well. Yeah, as well. Thank you. Thank you again for the stream and for the event. All right. And to everyone else, we will be going live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about another, well, not another, but a board game called Mission to Planet Hex. So stick to, stay tuned for that. We will be ending the stream and going live again around 8.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is about 48 minutes from now. So uh, stay tuned and feel free to go to etablecon.com and participate in the Discord and everything else.